You can try to have a plan, but you have to expect that plan to change. Hi, I'm Sante Durazio, and we're here today at MANA in Jersey City. I was actually born 15 minutes from here in Newark, but I was raised all my life in uh, Brooklyn, New York. My mom and my dad immigrated here, and I'm first generation American. My father was a barber, and my mother was an opera singer. She was very religious, and my father wasn't. It was in barber shops, it was a man's world, and so there was always a pinup in the back room. There was always pinups in the basement, and so I grew up with that kind of contrast. Someone who was very devout, and someone who wasn't. And actually, it appears in my work. I didn't realize that till much later on. Lou Bernstein was a photographer of the New York School, and they found things. They never created their images, because that's what Lou taught me. You don't create a photograph, you find it. He lived around the corner from me. He used to get his hair cut from my father, and it wasn't until I was going to college that he saw me with my big portfolio, you know, my drawing pads, and said, you know, would you like to learn photography? And I was like, sure. This guy was a master, and he was one of those men who dedicated himself to the art of photography and never used it in any commercial manner. On the weekends, he would go to Coney Island or the aquarium or whatever, and uh, he would bring me along with him. He became my mentor. And he didn't necessarily teach me technique, he taught me philosophy. When I developed my first negatives, they were all overexposed in black. And I said, Lou, what do I do with this? He goes, well, you read the books about that. I'm going to teach you how to see. Well, the commercial field is basically following other people's direction, other people's opinions. Um, bending your own rules to suit them, second-guessing yourself, too, as to what they would want. As opposed to somebody like me, who's always trying to get something more original, it's like, they're like, what for? We're already giving you the image, just copy it. But I can't do that, so I'd go nuts. Most of my career, I went nuts. <laughs> I was a part of documenting that whole um, supermodel era for sure. People have told me that I was the only one who truly documented that time. And I, yeah, there's some truth to it. In 81, I got my first job. By 83, I got hired by Andy Warhol at interview. I would go out at night as one of the cute boys of his entourage, because I was cute back then. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember being in in Rome for the collections back around 85 or so. And this young, beautiful, beautiful young girl was one of the models and her, she was 14 years old. Her name was Christy Tarleton. And I befriended her. And then there was another friend. Her name was Naomi Campbell at 15 years old. I was a man about town at 26 years old. By the ages of 17 and 18, they, know, they had known me very well and always trusted me and I was always a gentleman with them and to the point where even Eileen Ford would only let Christy out with me. Mm, big mistake. Because <laughs> I would be going out to the best clubs and I'd be taking Christy with me and these girls would basically, by the age of 19, 20, would come over in the winter at my house and my mother would make them all pasta. I was basically their protector and guardian and guide through the underworld. Most of the pictures that are in my books and the pictures that have now become very collectible are all rejects of commercial shots. See, because the commercial people were looking for something else. At lunch or right after, I would take the girl and do my picture on her, even if I only had 15 minutes. I, I grew up as a painter, and so I always missed the act of making a mark my hand. I was taking a lot of images that I had never printed and I would never compromise my subjects no matter what. I started scratching out everybody's face. 
you know, which is actually quite common. When you go walk around the street, you see posters, you know, somebody puts a mustache on a girl, or <laughs> they scratch out their face. And so I used that device and I found that the pictures became better. It abstracted the, sub the subject. It was no longer, oh, that's Cindy Crawford. Oh, it's Kate Moss. Uh, people were able to look at the composition. There was mystery. A curator by the name of Neville Wakefield invited a whole group of artists to do a porn in their own style. My thing is that porn is the new pop. You know, as Coca-Cola was for Andy Warhol, porn is for us. What I did was I applied the scratching out to the porn. So I wasn't about to film a porn, so I found a 70s porn. And I scratched out everybody's face and their privates. 24 frames a second. It took like five months to do 10 minutes. And so what happens is when the film is moving, all these marks, every, no two marks are the same, so they're jumping around. And so really what you have is a moving abstract film. And the background is porn. You don't see anything, but you think you do. And at first people are looking around to look past the scratches, and then they settle in and realize it's the scratches that are the subject. And I take the stills, take one frame, blow it up large, and it's a painting. I'm really happy with the development that's taking me years to get here. It's a quite serious subject to me, as far as art. At this stage in my life, I've learned enough to go within. You have to go back to your psychic library. Your, your daily diary is your subject. That's that's when the truth really comes out. You see it in the work, too. I started keeping journals in 1981. I got my first professional job with Italian Vogue. I needed to document the pictures I took and the amount of film I used, because I had to pay for it. Who assisted me? The editor. Where? My language is visual, and I can tell a story just with the pack of matches from the restaurant I went to, the wine bottle, the ticket stub from the movie theater. So it was actually a need and a mode of relaxation and meditation. What I've done is I've blown up the pages from my past that were graphically interesting to me, and I now collage on top of those. I came to Mana via Milk Studios. The guys at Milk are fantastic. Uh, I shot there for years. And uh, he was telling me about this place in Jersey City. And uh, my first thought, like everyone's, every New York's, oh, that's New Jersey. It's like going to Idaho, you know? And so I took a ride here and I was quite blown away. Since I've been here, which is um, a year and a half, this place has developed into a mega, mega arena for um, anybody in the arts to come. And they've been so great here, you know, and so accommodating. And um, it's sort of like um, a, a family atmosphere. I'm a student of history. I see the world through symbols and mythology. You uh, develop your own rules of conduct and your own morals. I've spent the last seven years, eight years changing. People don't want you to change. My answer is that I'm not going back. I'm actually moving on and up. 